Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Kerala set is this time, not in February, but in January. So we are here with some rapid revision for Kerala set, which will, of course, help a lot of you pass other exams also. Now, NTNet results have come. And a lot of you have passed. I'm so proud because hundreds of people messaged me. I'm proud of you all. Now, a lot of you just came up to the cutoff and just missed it. Do not be disheartened or upset. Even if this has happened before, do not be disheartened. You have come very close to passing. You should study with a concerted effort. Don't lose your tempo. Just go on hitting at it until you break through. When you become relaxed in between, when you lose your tempo, when you uh, get demoralized or depressed, that is the problem. You have to really passionately go on and on and on until you pass. Any exam is like that. Kerala set, NTNet, every exam is like that. So that is why we don't give up. We are there with you, giving you as much as content as possible. Practice with us. Don't miss out any session, any video. Because every time you practice, it will tremendously help you. Hello, everyone. Got it, everyone? So let me share the screen. Kerala set rapid revision crash course. It's only one day. Okay. Let us start from the very beginning. This is a PYQ. Previous year question. Dash imported the Deca syllabic line from France. Remember, even for NTNet or any exam, this is important. We all know that this man in the picture imported the Deca syllabic line. But where did he import it from? It is from France and under Italian influence made it pliable, easy to use. It became the heroic line, which was a surpassing vehicle of the great poetry of England. All the great poems of England were written in this line, which was very much like speech. What is the decasyllabic line? It is the iambic pentameter line. And in couplets, it is called heroic couplet. That is why it became the heroic line. Iambic pentameter line in couplets is called the heroic line. Who is the Man who imported the Deca syllabic line. Ankita, everybody knows it is Chaucer. Awesome. Ankita, where did Chaucer introduce the uh, Deca syllabic line? Tell us. Yes, in the legend of good women. It is in the legend of good women that Chaucer introduced the heroic couplet. Ankita, do you know before the legend of good women, what line did he use? Before... <laughs> The Deca syllabic couplet. He used rhyme royal. He ah, bef before that he used rhyme royal and first he used octosyllabic couplet. Octosyllabic couplets. The octosyllabic couplets are lines with eight feet. Deca syllabic have ten feet. Rhyme royal is also iambic pentameter, ten feet, but in stanzas of seven, seven line the stanza. Iambic pentameter, seven lines in a stanza. That is called heroic, sorry, rhyme royal or Chaucerian stanza. Troilus and Creed and Legend of Good Women are written in Chaucerian stanza. The Hound of Heaven is a 182 line poem, a very famous poem. But this man is famous only for this poem. It was in the end of the 18th century that this poem was written. Who is this man? Is it Thomas Gray? No. 
I said, this man was famous for only this poem. It cannot be Thomas Gray. It cannot be James Thompson. It cannot be William Collins then. Is it Francis Thompson, Ankita? Yes, it is Francis Thompson. He was also a Catholic mystic. He was a mystic. He spiritual writer. The hound of heaven. This was a time when uh, Catholicism and Protestantism are both very powerful in England. Right. They fought a lot. Is there a text in this class? Is an essay by a critic. A reader responds critic. Uh, is it Stanley Fish, David Blage, Wolfgang Eiser or none of the above? Remember, a lot of questions come from reader response criticism. Ankita, tell us the answer. Yes, it is Stanley Fish. Is there a text in this class? Is the book that introduced the concept of interpretive communities? Before that, Stanley Fish talked about affective stylistics. He gave up the idea of affective stylistics and started talking about interpretive communities in this book. Interpretive communities means the community you belong to gives you the strategy of interpretation. A community of doctors, for example, will read a text in a particular way, which is different from how lawyers would read the same text because that is another interpretive community. So, affective stylistics and interpretive communities, both are terms used by Stanley Fish. Affective stylistics means looking at a text based on how the stylistic elements of the text affect the reader. That is affective stylistics. Okay. Now, identify the scholarly journal founded and edited by F.R. Lewis and Q.D. Lewis. Is it Scrutiny, Criterion, Lyceum or Athenum? Ankita, what do you think? Scrutiny. It is Scrutiny. A very important journal run by F.R. Lewis. It was a journal that practiced close reading of the new critics. Close reading. Okay, Ankita, you can read the next one. Milton's dash... The fragment of a mask is a fine compliment in verse to Alice Spencer, Dowager Countess of Derby. So which mask is this? Comus, Arcadus, Lycidas, or El Allegro? So which is the fragment of a mask? Definitely not Lycidas. Hmm. Allegro is also is not a mask. Is it Comus or Arcades? It is Arcades, which was written, which was written for Alice Spencer, Countess Dowager of Derby. Comus was written to be presented at Ludlow Castle during Michael Mars Night. Both are masks. A mask is a theatrical entertainment, but it is performed by amateur courtiers not by professional actors. There are some Shakespearean plays which have masks within the play. For example, The Tempest has a wedding mask. Please, you can read the next question, Ankita. Who is almost the only representative of the interlude school of dramatic writing? And it's a PYQ. So who is it? John Hayward, William Stevenson, David Lindsay, or John Redford. We know one of them to be a very famous writer of a very famous interlude. So who is it? Remember, interludes, the four Ps is a famous interlude. What is an interlude? It is a short, secular, dramatic piece of writing. A short Secular, comical piece of writing, interlude. And the four P's is written by John Hayward. John Hayward wrote the four P's. Palmer, Peddler, Pardner, Pothicary. These are the four characters uh, we hear about in the four P's. 
William Stevenson or John Still is also a very early writer. Uh, and then we have David Lindsay. He, William Stevenson, John Still, they wrote comedies. David Lindsay wrote Satire on the Four Estates. So these are uh, William Stevenson or John Still wrote Gammer Gurton's Needle. That is their famous play. The second comedy in English. The first comedy is, is Ralph Royster Doyster. The second comedy in English is supposed to be Gammer Gurton's Needle. That is supposed to be written by William Stevenson or John Still. John Redford is also an early writer. Okay. Who nurtured the intellectual curiosity of Shelley in his formative period? Is it William Godwin, J.S. Mill, John Locke or Thomas Hobbes? Formative period is an early period. If you know a little bit about Shelley's biography, you might be able to answer. What is the answer, Ankita? It is William Godwin, his at first, father in law. At first, Shelley was influenced by William Godwin. Then he got tired of him, but he got interested in Godwin's daughter, Mary Shelley, and eloped with her. William Godwin himself was a writer. William Godwin wrote a Gothic novel, Things as They Are, or Caleb Williams, is William Godwin's Gothic novel. Do you remember? Shelley himself wrote two Gothic novels. They are Zastrosi and Saint Irwin. J.S. Mill wrote a book for women. What is it? The Subjection of Women. John Locke is the author of Essay Concerning Human Understanding. Thomas Hobbes wrote Leviathan, L-E-V-I-A-T-H-A-N. Okay, Ankita, your turn. Which of the following is not one of the four quartets of T.S. Eliot? Dry Salvages, Little Gidding, Ash Wednesday, or Burnt Norton? So we clearly know one of them is his conver uh, conversion poem. So that's not one of the four quartets. The four quartets are B-E-D-L, Burnt Norton, East Coker, Dry Salvages and Little Gidding in that order. B-E-D-L. Ash Wednesday is not one of the four quartets. The four quartets title was taken from music. And the four quartets are very religious poems. All of them talk about spirituality and religion. Ash Wednesday is called, it's also a religious poem. It is called Eliot's Conversion Poem. Eliot had converted to Unitarianism and uh, from Protestantism. And he also became a British citizen both in the same year, 1927. At that time, he wrote four quarts, sorry, uh, Ash Wednesday. At that time, he wrote Ash Wednesday. Okay, Ankita, your turn. Divorce Binodini, generally regarded as the first modern novel by an Indian author, was translated into English by his biographer, Dash. So who translated this? Krishna Kripalini, S. Radha Krishnan, Sarojini Naidu, or Edward Thompson. So in Bengali, this novel was known as Chokher Bali. But when this biographer translated this novel, he named it as Binodini. So which uh, biographer is this? Okay, guys, what is the answer? It is Krishna Kripalani. Ankita, do you know, uh, can you tell us more about Tagore's works? Yes. So, Bengal, I should ask her. Yeah. So uh, in Bengali, this novel was known as Chokher Bali. And this novel is about uh, Binodini, uh, who becomes a widow at a very young age. And it's about her desires, her unfulfilled desires rather, 
and it actually was a very taboo topic to talk about the desires of a widow but this novel uh, talks very deals very deftly with this idea and it also talks about how you know in the backdrop of the freedom movement of india and how it clashes with the inner world of or you know the home ghore baire like that uh, dichotomy was coming into being how the inner desires of a woman is coming into the conflict with the freedom movement of india back then yeah since you mentioned ghore bhaire uh, nokha dubi and gora these are all other novels of uh, the gore which bring the individual and his or her conflicts uh, juxtaposed with the politics of the time good thank you a dance of the forest a play which satirizes pre colonial african regimes is written by dash everybody might know this it's one of the most famous plays of this writer is it bole soinka ted hughes chinua achibe or ngugi wa tiongo this writer wrote a lot about uh, african mythology also superstition and he is from nigeria he wrote about the yoruba people tell me guys who is the author What is the answer, Ankita? It's Bole Soinka, who wrote this play to uh, celebrate the freedom uh, of Nigeria. Yes, and it is his uh, theatrical debut. It is very complex. It's a very it's a complex play that is very difficult to interpret or summarize. And uh, what he shows is what he says in many other. plays also that the past and the present are all the same they are all equally corrupt vole so inkas a dance of the forest graham greens the power and the glory is set in the city of dash it is a uh, a place where the communists are being hunted down anti communist city it is which is it london mexico dublin or rome it is in the mexican city of tabasco that graham greens power and the glory is set uh it is one of the catholic novels there are four novels of graham green that talk directly about catholicism and how individuals negotiate with catholicism bright and rock the power and the glory the heart of the matter the end of the affair Okay, Ankita. Where did the genre of the medieval comic tale called fabula originate? Spain, England, France, or Ireland? So we also encounter this uh, genre in Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, where many of the characters they tell fabula. I mean, fabula tales. And this genre came from which country? Fablo is a very comic, uh, farcical, you know, genre. It came from France. Fablo is a French, uh, genre. Which critical work credits Shakespeare with the largest and the most comprehensive soul? It's a P Y Q. Is it biography or literary? an essay of dramatic poesy characters of shakespeare's plays or the family shakespeare which critical work credits shakespeare with the largest and the most comprehensive soul definitely not family shakespeare family shakespeare is known for bowdlerized version where all the vulgar unpleasant elements are removed biographia literaria is not directly about shakespeare either it must be an uh, essay of dramatic poesy by dryden what do you think ankita yes it is uh, dryden's an essay of dramatic poesy where he talks about not only shakespeare but also ben jonson chaucer homer and he described shakespeare as such if they are giving options like this anybody with general knowledge can easily guess this is a very famous line there are many 
expressions like this in Dryden's of dramatic poesy. Shakespeare was the Homer. So even if you don't get time to read up all the critical essays, at least look online, look up online for the excerpts, the major excerpts from the critical essays. Okay. Can you read Ankita? Which one of these playwrights is not associated with kitchen sink drama? J.M. Singe, John Osborne, Arnold Wesker, or Shilag Delany. So we know that kitchen sink drama is almost a genre where people talked about their working class lives, their struggles. And that's why this idea of the kitchen sink, where they're almost getting to uh, talk about the very interiors of their house and their struggles. So we know kitchen for sure... Sink. Kitchen sink realism developed from angry young men movement. Angry young men playwrights were kitchen sink uh, writers also. Uh, you don't have to get a confusion whether John Osborne is a kitchen sink writer. He is. Because uh, kitchen sink realism and angry young men movement overlap. Definitely Arnold Wesker and Sheila Delany are pioneers of kitchen sink realism. Uh, Sheila Delany's A Taste of Honey, Arnold Wesker Trilogy. Arnold Wesker Trilogy is, uh, the three plays are Chicken Soup with Bali, Roots, and I am talking about Jerusalem. All these are kitchen sink plays. J.M. Singe is the answer. He is not associated. He is an Irish playwright. Who is the queen in the play Gorbiduk? Elizabeth, Georgia, Videna, Richland. It's a PYQ. Gorbiduk, even though you don't know all the intricate details of the plots, it is important to know a little bit about the characters, the main themes. King Gorbiduk and his wife Videna. They have two sons, Ferex and Porex. You should know that. Okay, Ankita. The prelude begins and ends with Wordsworth's childhood at Dash. Cambridge, Cumberland, Salisbury or North Wales. So we know that the prelude is, uh, is the spiritual autobiographical work by uh, Wordsworth in blank verse, where he talks about the, the development of his self as a poet. And this work actually begins with uh, Wordsworth talking about his childhood and his school days. So he spent his childhood, childhood in which place? Wordsworth lived in Lake District that everybody knows. It is very, very important that you have a sense of geography. North Wales and Lake District are far apart. It cannot be North Wales. Wordsworth studied at Cambridge. He did not spend his childhood at Cambridge. It is Cumberland in Lake District. Uh, that is where he spent his childhood and that is the answer. Cambridge also comes in prelude. Okay, Ankita. A dash by John Ruskin is a study of Greek myths. So which work is it? Well, it talks about Greek mythology. The Crown of the Wild Olive, Sesame and Lilies, The Queen of Air, or Munera Pulveris. So Sesame and Lilies is obviously not about Greek mythology. It's more about cultural studies, towards cultural studies rather. So, and the crown of the wild olive is not by John Ruskin. It's by someone else. So, now you have to choose between Munera Pulveris or the Queen of Air. It is the Queen of Air. Munera Pulveris is a book of political economy. Munera Pulveris is a book of political economy. The Queen of Air being a study of the Greek myths of cloud, it seems, by John Ruskin. This is part of forgotten books. So if you don't remember, that's, uh, you know, justifiable. <laughs> God, these people, John Ruskin and Carlyle, Victorian prose writers are very important, isn't it, Ankita? They always ask questions from here. 
and they wrote about such relevant topics which never go out of you know uh, importance the, those uh, topics are uh, relevant till our day as well the issues they raised uh, that's true those are very pertinent all these people actually laid the uh, foundations of culture studies carlyle also wrote a lot about culture matthew arnold also but they did not have contemporary perspectives they supported high culture mostly but ruskin who came from the commercial class actually wrote about uh, ordinary people working class culture i don't know why our culture studies people like raymond williams are not talking about ruskin because he was a man who came from the commercial class and wrote about the working classes he for example uh, brought art uh, uh, you know collection and uh, writing about art to the level of the commercial classes yeah i find much similarities uh, of john ruskin with joseph addison because addison was someone who made philosophy you know you know to the he brought philosophy to the level of the common man and uh, ruskin also made art criticism much democratic he brought it yes. down to common people yeah addison said that he wants to bring philosophy out of the closets and libraries to the yes. uh, tea table coffee table tea tables yes yes who said the following words all the world is a stage ah everybody is ready to say shakespeare but read the rest and most of us are desperately unrehearsed this is not george bernard shaw this is not arnold wesker or shakespeare is it shaw no kesi ankita yes it is shaw no kesi <gasps> shaw no kesi has this look also yeah <laughs> Which of Virginia Woolf's novels is composed of alternating interludes and episodes? Alternating interludes and episodes. Is it night and day, to the lighthouse, the waves, or the years? Ankita, alternating interludes and episodes is not there in To the Lighthouse. Anyway, night and day also no. It is an early work, and it it's not like that. The waves, the years. Which of these, Ankita? I will go with the waves. The waves, yes. It is the monologue of six different characters. Yes. You see all of them as children at the beginning. Right. Can you read again your Tagore? Yes. Yeah. Tagore's brief chat with Dash was recorded and known as "Note on the Nature of Reality." So. who was it whom he met with and talked with and that discussion came to be known as this uh, essay einstein edison john ruskin or ralph waldo emerson he met with this absolute scholar and he became a great friend of this scholar and they talked a lot on many topics actually and their that discussion was recorded and it later came out as an essay did they look alike in some ways uh, not very much but you can <laughs> compare a bit <laughs> it is einstein you know the lo longish hair and not in this picture but yeah and uh, einstein with his easy e is equal to mc square had a you know a unique take on reality as well and i realized that uh, kerala said in kerala said many questions in many years have come from tagore aha uh -huh. tries or four times the theory questions also are there a lot yes yes choose the wrongly matched pair can you read ankita hmm. okay so we have to choose which work has been wrongly matched with its author cardinal newman the idea of a university matthew arnold literature and dogma Thomas Carlyle on heroes and worship. Next, Robert Browning, say not the struggle not availeth. So we know that Cardinal Newman, he belonged to the Oxford movement. So we know that he talked about the uh, concept of the university, which was emerging back then. So I think literature and dogma is also written by Matthew Arnold. He talked a great deal about literature, culture. religion and 
on heroes and hero worship is also a, a very important work by thomas carlyle who very talks about the hero culture and hero worship you know the idea of the uh, messiah and how we uh, tend to you know uh, think of a particular figure as hero and how we start worshiping them but say not the struggle not availeth it's a poem but it's not by browning it's by arthur hugh clow arnold's friend so option 4 is wrongly matched arthur hugh clow is the man for whom arnold wrote thyrsis yes good who is a narrator and protagonist in the buddha of suburbia hanif qureshi wrote the buddha of suburbia chali eva karim or harun contemporary literature is important it is karim who is attributed to have made the statement the king james bible is a magna carta for the poor and oppressed the most democratic book in the world is it raymond chandler t s eliot virginia wolf or theodore roosevelt what do you think ankita is the answer It is the most Theodore democratic Theodore Roosevelt Theodore Roosevelt said the King James Bible is the most democratic book in the world now in the exam if there is a question like this and you don't know one thing about it leave it you don't have to answer all the 100 questions right 100% questions so doesn't really matter but it is good to know uh moving on this is Theodore Roosevelt the refusal to use the language of the colonizer in a correct or standard way this is a question from linguistics is it ankita what is the what are the options so is it appropriation retribution abrogation or assimilation the refusal so, to yes. use the language of the colonizer in a correct way you were going to explain okay so you know when we hear these very terms appropriation assimilation they don't even you know sound like you are refusing but abrogation is the one which has this idea of you are abrogating you are pushing something away so it's abrogation abrogation means refusal rejection it's a very important post colonial technique ngugi wa tiongo abrogated language and uh, used gikuyu instead he did not use english he used gikuyu instead isn't it abrogation is a technique okay choose the wrongly matched pair it is also a previous year question theory of adaptation is it by linda hutchin feminist translation studies is it by sherry simon andre lefebre uh now ulta ho gaya Uh, did andre lefebre write the rewriting culture school poly system theory is it by delus and guattari so theories and concepts matched with current uh, theorists that is a very important area can you explain and talk about it ankita so to begin with the first option uh we know that linda hutchin uh, was quite an important writer when it came to the theory of adaptation especially adapting of uh, novels into movies so in this work a theory of adaptation linda hutchin has has talked about the transla translation of novels into movies so we know that it's correct next sherry simon is a very important figure in translation uh, studies there is feminist translation studies she is an important figure next andre lefebre, lefebre uh, he is associated with this uh, rewriting culture school where he believes in rewriting of things rewriting or translation as a rewriting process but a uh, polysystem theory it's uh, they delus and guattari they are not associated with uh, polysystem theory uh, someone else is the pioneer can we go to the next slide yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so this person um, i i will tell the name so this person is the pioneer let me just you know yeah 
so these questions are about translation theories and adaptation theories uh it, these are two very important areas so even in net we need to know about them who are the major figures in translation theories who are the major figures in adaptation we should look up make a list and uh, study them because these uh, are usually prescribed in syllabi now the trick is you know when you study for an exam the trick is you should continuously look up ma syllabi you know ma syllabi will have prescribed their works adaptation ma syllabi translation studies ma, MA syllabi translation theory ma syllabi like that that is how we prepare at valat that is how if, uh, questions a lot of questions come from our material because we diligently stick to syllabi and we look up uh, what is the suggested reading in syllabi that is how we do it you should also do it this evan zohar and he is the pioneer of this polysystem theory in translation studies and through his theory he has talked about the idea of flexibility and openness in uh, translation studies very good evan zohar z o h a r okay everybody remember that polysystem theory evan zohar okay what was the name of the organization formed in india in the year 1925 to promote university activities by sharing information and cooperation in the field of education culture sports and allied areas is it university grants commission inter university board association of indian universities or cabe central advisory board of education questions like this can be expected in net also ankita it is association of indian universities remember that a history of indian university system history of indian education history of elt in india uh, all these are very very important areas that are going to uh, be there in all uh, exams in the coming years we are having a massive question answer session today not a usual one because kerala set only one session we are giving that's why evaluation that monitors learning progress is what kind of evaluation is it placement evaluation formative evaluation diagnostic evaluation or summative evaluation evaluation that monitors learning progress cannot be summative it must be formative it is happening while you learn isn't it okay ankita if a teacher is not able to answer the question of a pupil so what he should do he should say that he will answer after consultation rebuff the pupil say that the question is wrong or feel shy of his ignorance so he should say that he will answer after consultation yeah you should never rebuke the pupil rebuke means scold you should never do that you should not say the question is wrong you should not feel shy it's a very easy option yeah cone of experience very important idea basic idea in uh, learning pedagogy is it propounded by ned a flander s l pressy edgar dale or b f skinner it is edgar dale basics in uh, education you should know as all of you are aware ankita the most abundant organic molecule on the surface of the earth is dash cellulose rna dna or hemoglobin it can be hemoglobin because hemoglobin refers to red blood cells so that cannot be the answer it is cellulose it is very clear all plants are made of cellulose yeah so that brings us to the end of this uh, massive rapid fire a rapid revision for kerala set thank you very much everyone uh, for being with us i hope uh, you will get some areas from our discussion what we are giving you is not questions please don't tell us uh, your questions do not come in our exam it is because i am not going to steal questions from your paper or anything i am just directing your focus to certain areas so in the remaining one or two days please read up 
on these areas, uh, on these authors, and I hope it will help you in the exam. So bye-bye from Ankita and me.